Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look at Android and the PX Play app with its new 2K 4K upscaling. All right, so what we're looking at here is the Legion Tab Gen 3 running Android. And we have this connected to the Legion G9 controller, which kind of gives us a really great, you know, handheld, PC-like handheld experience here. But uh, we're gonna check a look at, take a look at PX Play. I'm gonna jump right into the settings and kind of show you all of the different settings that it has to offer here. So over the standard remote play, you just get a lot more control, which I really love. So we're gonna do 1080p, and then as you can see here, this is gonna give us the upscaling here using FSR, which is great for this screen, which is 1600p. Um, the bit rate, we can also control the bit rate here, and I've got mine cranked to 100,000, something else you cannot do in the regular re remote play app. So that's gonna be super nice. And you can just kind of see this, this app just has, it's loaded with lots of options for you to kind of customize your stream experience to give you the best, uh, you know, performance, the best image quality, you know, smoothest frame rates, all that kind of stuff. So you have just a ton of options. And on this, this is an HDR display. So you do want to make sure the H, uh, EVC encoder is on, HDR is on. Also in the haptic feedback section, we want to set this to rumble because this G9 controller is a USB controller. And so we want to make sure it's on rumble instead of the PS5 haptic mode since we're not using an actual DualSense controller, which also would have to be wired to get that. And you can just see there's just a lot more options here as we kind of scroll through. And you can kind of pick and choose kind of what you do interact with on here. There's just tons of customizability. If you want to use on-screen controls, you can like customize where all the placements of all that kind of stuff goes. But let's go ahead and just jump right in here. And right away, I can tell you this is super crisp and clean. So this is awesome. So this Android tablet is 1600p. It is HDR. It does go up to 165 hertz. Um, I actually have it set to just the standard uh, refresh rate here of 60 hertz because that's what we're going to be utilizing here in PS Play. So the new update uh, for PX Play is um, going to give you the 2K or 4K upscaling. Uh, using FSR 1.0, just depending on the device that you are using and what it's capable of. And later in the video, if you want to see us running on an Android uh, phone proper, I will be uh, pulling out my uh, personal Android phone that you can see it uh, running on as well. So, and we're going to kind of look at both the same uh, game, so you can just kind of tell the difference between you know running on a tablet or running on a phone. There's really not going to be a whole lot of difference, but. Uh, you know, last time we did uh, streaming with just the uh, G9 controller and the Legion tab, a lot of people wanted to see the phone as well. So we'll actually do that um, in the video later. And so we're jumping into Death Stranding 2 here, uh, one of my favorite uh, games uh, of all time, R really probably my favorite game this year. It's just an absolutely incredible game. It takes everything from the first game and just elevates it. And it, man, what an incredible game. I think I probably played it 115 hours or so. And I just don't get sick of Death Stranding. The gameplay loops, I, I love them. So um, highly recommend the game. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hop off this uh, trike here real quick because I'm also going to show you um, that you can still use the touch screen because we are running Android here. Um, and so like if we wanted to go over and add a bunch of likes to the person who helped to make this row, we can just tap on the touchpad there. And you can see all these on-screen controls. You can actually totally customize them to be wherever you would like on the screen or even just not there at all. So like if you wanted to move that left thumbstick to the bottom left and get rid of the um, D-pad, you can absolutely do that. So you can really get a nice, totally customizable experience which for when you're running it on like your phone or something like that and you don't have a controller with you, um, that's a great way to kind of uh, make it the on-screen controls a little bit more palatable. And I'll show you that again later running on my um, Galaxy Fold 7. And um, it, <laughs> the on-screen controls aren't for me, but uh, they do work really well. So I will uh, definitely show you that. But uh, yeah, so this looks... Super crisp. You can definitely notice a difference, you know, from 1080p to 
1600p. Um, so if you're running like regular PlayStation Remote Play, not only are you going to notice a difference in the resolution, but also if you're on a network that can handle the higher 100,000 level bitrate, I mean, it's going to be night and day better than the standard PlayStation Remote Play app. Um, I did check out the PlayStation Remote Play app before um, this. Before I started shooting this video, it does look like they've added a little bit to it. You can do HDR now on it, but you still can't do. You still can't control the bit rates, and you, you still can't do the upscaling or anything like that. But uh, you know, hey, from our iOS uh, upscaling video here, we're gonna do the peer walk. Uh, I love doing the peer walk here uh, on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And this looks just absolutely super crisp and clear, and it's running so smooth. Like as you, as we like turn the camera around, man, it just buttery smooth. This app is so awesome for PlayStation Remote Play. Look at that uh, surf and turf sign up there, just all, like super crystal clear. And being able to do this in HDR, especially with this, I mean, if you guys have a, a Lenovo Legion Tab. Uh, Gen 3, Gen 4, Y700, whatever, that's compatible with this G9 controller. I mean, this is awesome. It gives you basically like a, a Legion Go uh, type experience. And actually, I would even say maybe closer to like a Legion Go S type experience in terms of like the ergonomics, except for with an 8.8 inch screen instead of an 8.0 inch screen. Because uh, obviously there's no detachable controller, so it's able to be, you know, much more rounded and things like that. And I did have another viewer comment uh, that I commented about how light it was, um, and they pointed out like how many total grams it is. It is not. It is still heavy, right? It's not like because uh, it is a big uh, screen, but compared to like the Legion Go, and especially now that I'm using the Legion Go Two, if I go grab this, just the ergonomics of it and the way that it's kind of balanced and everything, it is just way more comfortable. It feels lighter as you hold it in comparison to say like the legion go 2 i i can't quite put my finger on what's wrong with the legion go 2 i think it might not be balanced very well and i wonder if that kind of wedge shape that they've added to it has anything to do with it i'm not so sure but uh the more i use the legion go 2 i mean the screen is obviously incredible and i think it is the star of the show but you know there are there are some issues adding up that I'm not super in love with. And it's kind of kind of got me exploring my options on uh, whether I'm going to keep that one long term or not. So if you're interested in Legion Go 2, definitely subscribe to the channel because I will do much more content on it. Um, and I will definitely let you know if I decide to keep it or if I decide to send it back. But uh, hey, that's uh, let's jump into one more game here on PX Play on the Legion Tab Y700. Yeah, I wanted to kind of show off some, you know, just like really good looking games so you can see just like how well they shine when you use this PX Play app. I mean, it is so good. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the story here. So this is going to be The Last of Us Part 2. This is just like the, I think it's the opening sequence of the game if I remember right. I thought I had, uh, I thought I had a save later on in the game that I could jump into, but uh, I guess maybe not. Um, but I did, uh, it should be cause I think I had chapter select on there too. So this, I mean, I got the platinum in it, so I'm sure I can do it. But, uh, I guess when I jumped in here, it jumped into the beginning of the game. I think it's probably cause I started a chronological run, which, uh, is a cool way to play it. If you're not aware on last of us part two, if you've played it before, there's a certain order that the game is presented and it's not chronological, but they've added a mode where you can play it chronologically and it you know it doesn't necessarily make as maybe as good a sense but i think it is a cool way to play it and i would love to do a full playthrough that way uh, you know if i could find some time i, I just so many games right now but then let's skip this cutscene real quick and uh man yeah the hdr looking really good here and it's incredible that this is running on an Android device because this looks, dude, this, I mean, this looks like, so this is running on PS5 Pro and my God, look at, look how good this looks. This looks just absolutely incredible. Super crisp and clean. I really, I should have brought the PlayStation portal over here and uh, showed you that uh, as a comparison as well, because 
playing on this versus playing on the portal look i love the portal i think it's a great device and i think it's a a really good uh price device for what you get out of it and especially now that they're adding all kinds of new features to it but there's so many better screens out there and a lot of us even have better screens that we carry around with us in our pockets you know maybe you have a s24 ultra or s25 ultra or you know if you guys uh, we have a lot of international viewers so there's a lot of other uh, international phones that we don't even get here you know your xiaomi's and some of that kind of stuff your oppos and a lot of those have just incredible big screens that uh, we can do remote play on and uh, having this px play app available on android a really great way to do playstation remote play all right so let's put the uh, lenovo tab away here and let's jump into the same app, we're going to jump into PX Play, but we're going to do it on my Galaxy Fold 7. So let's pull that out and pull it over here. Here it is in all its glory. Now, what's really cool about this too is uh, in the app, if you really wanted to, you can have it uh, like just zoom and fill the screen, but you would just cut off so much from the uh, from the edges to do that. So you could just have like a nice big fat square uh, Fold 7 experience. We're not going to do that here. Um, I'm just going to run through these settings here and just kind of make sure they're all set up the same. So that way you can see it. You know, the app does feature some things like uh, frame pacing and stuff like that. So you can really dial in your experience to make sure that your, uh, like your frames per second stay nice and smooth and consistent. And you saw when we were doing those panning uh, in uh, some of those uh, uh, earlier shots in those games that, that it was just nice and buttery smooth. Um, it's sometimes it can even feel like better than 60 FPS just because the app does such a good job at handling all of the, uh, the motion. Um, so we've got everything set up here and, um, I'm actually going to use uh, an Xbox controller here because it's just the one I had sitting around, but obviously you could use a dual sense. And if you have a phone, even you could, you could, uh, wire it via USB-C in, and you could change the haptic setting over to, uh, the uh, enabled mode, which will give you actually some better haptics on, uh, you, by using the dual sense. I think you even get the, hap the, the uh, I forget what they call them, but the haptic, the resistant triggers too. So that's pretty cool. But uh, I'm going to boot up Death Stranding 2 here. And uh, the thing that I immediately noticed was that, and it was, it's cool that you can still do this with a wireless controller, even on a phone, but you, you know, I have it set to the rumble mode and I was just immediately getting you know, really good vibration right out of the box here. So let's go ahead and load up sort of the same uh, save, same location there you can see. And this is a, now this is a different type of screen. So the Legion uh, tab, the Y700 or Gen 3 or whatever you have, it has an IPS LCD, which they, to, to their credit, Lenovo, I mean, they have some really nice LCD screens, but uh, we've got OLED here on the inside panel of the Galaxy Fold 7. So of course it has hdr i mean it really uh you know this app really pops on this display so it looks quite excellent and i am noticing just a super sharp image with having that uh, fsr turned on so i mean you're getting i mean it you know there is a little bit of latency of course but if you do a lot of remote play which i do my brain is kind of tuned to that um, and the latency is, you know, it's not that much, especially when you're in your home network, which most of the time I am playing on my uh, in-home network. So, I mean, the latency is, it's almost non-existent. It, it almost feels like you're playing natively on the console. It's not quite. And if you're ultra sensitive to latency, you know, yeah, you're going to notice a little bit of latency, but not any more than you would notice with the PlayStation Remote Play app or with PlayStation Portal, anything like that. It's just going to be the same there. So here we are using the on-screen controls. Which I'm going to tell you, if uh, you know, actually having this uh, fold device, th this might be something that I might want to use more because uh, since I can kind of customize what's where, like I might move this left stick to the bottom left corner and the right stick to the bottom right corner, maybe move those buttons up a little bit, maybe move my uh, R1, R2s down a little bit, um, and just kind of give me just a little bit more of a comfortable layout to play. And I could probably play that way. I'm not a touchscreen kind of guy. Uh, I've taken some crap on the channel for just not even wanting to touch my screen for the uh, PlayStation Remote Play, like, uh, touchpad, uh, uh, you know, functionality. I prefer to have it, like, mapped to a, uh, a button or something like that. 
So, uh, but anyway, it, uh, you know, the Fold 7 has a, a big enough screen that, uh, and a weird aspect ratio that if you can kind of tuck away some of those controls in the black areas, uh, it might be a little bit more usable than it otherwise would be. So let's do our little pier walk here, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Man, I love Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth are just incredible games. If you if you thought about playing either one of these and you've been kind of holding off, you should probably, next time they're on sale or whatever you're waiting for, go ahead and pick them up, man. They are absolutely awesome. I, I loved Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And... It, you know, this being the sequel, it's kind of like Death Stranding 1 to 2. Like, it kind of elevates on almost everything the original does. Uh, well, original, I mean, the, you know, part one does. Um, and just, it, and it's super, you can sink so many hours into them. Now, the first game, I think, was about maybe mainline 30, you know, 35 hours. And you could probably do this one in not much more than that if you just mainline it. But I think I put over... 90 hours into remake, you know, getting the platinum trophy on it. And I think I put over a hundred hours on this one and it's not, I'm not even anywhere near the platinum trophy on this one. So that'll kind of tell you how much bigger of a game this one is than the, uh, the first iteration. But, uh, you know, the, the third one's going to be around the corner here in probably a year or two, maybe three. So, uh, these games are long. So if you're interested, you want to get through them before those, that one comes out. So definitely jump into those absolutely great games. So let's do our last game here. Uh, the last of us part two, we'll just jump into it real quick. And, uh, you know, that little, uh, at the bottom of the PlayStation bar there, there's that little switcher. I, I don't know why, but I just completely skipped over it for a long time. I've only ever like noticed it here recently. But it's kind of handy. It just keeps like your last couple of games that you've played uh, in the in the bar, so you can kind of jump back and forth without going to the home screen. I think that is pretty cool. It's not quite like uh, on Xbox where you have that quick resume and you can kind of jump back and forth, quick resume style. But uh, you know, one corrupted save for me, and I turned that quick resume off anyway. I thought quick resume was awesome, but the moment it corrupted a like a deep long game save for me, I was like, uh oh, no way. I'm not risking it anymore. Man, this looks sure does look good on this uh, Fold 7 screen. So yeah, if you guys have an Android phone, I highly recommend this PX Play app. It's available in the Play Store if you're in the U.S. I'm sure, I mean, around the world, I would imagine, too, different market Play Stores. But uh, there, I will also drop the links to the, um, the official Reddit and also uh, the store page where you can buy it from uh, the developer's personal store. So no matter where you are in the world, you will be able to purchase this either from the Google Play Store directly or from the developer directly. Um, and the you know the price in the U.S. when I I bought it, it's actually super affordable in a Google Play Store. I think it's six dollars and ninety nine cents. Uh, if you buy it from the developer directly, it's going to be in a different currency. So whenever I went to do it that way, I think it told, told me it was about $8 US. So uh, super affordable. And so if you are an Android user, I think it is well worth the price. But uh, I really just wanted to kind of show the uh, upscaling and how it uh, looks and runs. And, uh, you know, this is a, just an app I've used for a really long time. I've used it on a ton of different devices. I've used it on iOS. I use it uh, all the time now on Windows. I've used it on, on Linux uh, via the Steam Deck. So, I mean, I've used it on just about every different uh, uh, platform that it's on. And uh, it's really great. <laughs> that's that's how much I like it. I've bought it on every different platform. So you can buy a license for Windows and Linux, and that'll be one. You can buy uh, a license on for iOS, and it'll cover all the iOS devices. And then, of course, if you do it on Android, covers all the Android devices. So uh, three different versions to choose from that uh, all have different uh, pricing and some of them have different features like uh, Android is just now getting the upscaling whereas the iOS got it a little while ago. You might have seen that one on the channel. But uh, yeah, hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave those down below and I will see you in the next one.